Algebra 2 not knowing a little bit of this information, but just in case, we're going to start off slow. So looking at number one, I have two binomials. Can someone tell me what type of polynomial does two binomial, sing, two single, single polynomial binomial, binomials make? Uh, a quadratic. A quadratic. Good job, Chris. Nikki, I almost called you Christina. Nikki. Um, it makes a quadratic. Okay, so step one on your quiz is you'll have to be able to identify and name the polynomial. Okay, so the name of this polynomial is quadratic. Is this a positive or a negative quadratic? It's a positive quadratic. It's a positive quadratic. So that's the second thing you have to be able to do is tell me whether it's a negative or a positive quadratic. Was it hard? No. Totally doable, right? Okay, so that's thing one and thing two that I'm expecting you to, to do on the quiz. Thing three and four are to identify the x and y intercepts. So you're going to have to identify your x intercepts, and you're going to have to identify your y intercepts. Okay, your x intercept means which value is zero. Your x intercept means which value is zero? X or y? X intercept means that y is zero. The reason why y is zero because you're going horizontally, but you're not going up or down, right? Okay, y intercept. Y intercept is meaning that you are going up and down, but you're not going left and right, okay? X-intercepts are easy to figure out. In order to identify your X-intercept, it needs to be in factored form. The reason why it needs to be in factored form is because you're saying, what happens if this equals zero? Okay? And because it's in factored form, that means you can pull them apart and say, what would make X minus 2 equal zero? And what would make X plus 3 equal zero? What would you say? Well, two and negative three. It would be 2 and negative 3. So my x intercepts are 2 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. That's a common out of period. Okay? Because 2 minus 2 is? Zero. And negative 3 plus 3 is? Zero. Huh? Have have I have 2 because it's a okay. quadratic. Okay. I don't so have, have to have 2, but at most I will have 1. Y intercepts, you only have one Y intercept. The reason why you only have one Y intercept is because this is a function. And with functions, you cannot have repeating what values? X values. If I have repeating X values, then this would be a function. So there's only how many Y intercepts? One. And you have to find that one Y intercept. The way you find, the fastest way to find that Y intercept, in my opinion, is to simply unfactor the polynomial. Okay? And so when you're unfactoring, you're getting it where your, your degrees are in numerical order. Okay? So how would I unfactor a binomial? FOIL. So x times x is? x times 3 is? Negative 2 times x is? Negative 2 plus 3 times 3 is? Okay? Okay? What do we say about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is when what value is 0? When x. So if I plug 0, 0 in for all these x's, the only thing left standing is this is your y-intercept. So my y-intercept is at, and I write it as 0, comma, <coughs> negative 6. <coughs> it's the y-intercept because I care about what the y-value is. So cubic functions will have a cubic function will have up to three. It doesn't necessarily have to have three. It will have up to three individual <coughs> intercepts. Okay? So step one, name it. Step two, label it either positive or negative. Step three is identify your y-intercepts. You identify the x-intercepts, and you identify that when it's in what form? Factored form. Okay? Step four is you find the y-intercept, and the quickest way to find the y-intercept is to unfactor. 
Okay, you can't say foil because it is not necessarily always foiling. It could be, it wouldn't be box method. Box method is what you use to <coughs> factor. Oh, you can't use the Punnett square. You're right. Okay, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Well, box method and Punnett square, it, it confuses me. Yeah. Punnett square is where you're filling it in. Box method is where you're working it out. All right. Yeah, that's where you put the numbers in the box. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The box method, it starts inside. Yeah. Punnett square, square, it starts on the like outside. Cubic functions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if you're wondering what Punnett square is, Punnett square is where you, if you don't like foil, Punnett square looks like this. And then the number that's left in the last box is your y intercept. Okay? So either method, you either can foil or Punnett square. Got it? All right. Now we're on to the graphing part. On the graphing part, you label what you have. I have an intercept over here, I have an intercept over here, and I have a y intercept down here. <coughs> it's a positive quadratic, so what does my parent function look like? <laughs> it looks like the u, right? So I know that this is my shape, right? This is the shape that I'm trying to achieve. Well, that's easy. So we have to graph it too? You're sketching it. And this is part five of your quiz. How do we fill out the five things you would have to do? One, name. Two, positive or negative. Three, x intercept. Four, y intercept. Five is a sketch. Yes, Don? Um, so, like, to clarify, if it's positive, is it because the x is. It's positive because my leading coefficient is positive. See, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. So my leading coefficient is positive. It will be a negative quadratic. Huh? How did I get the positive from the negative 3? Okay, the positive 2. And the negative 3 comes from here. <coughs> I'm setting your factors equal to 0. So if I have x minus 2 equals 0, what would x have to be in order for this to be a true statement? Any other questions? Oh, these are all good questions. Huh? Any questions about number 1? Number 1 is the base of the problem. It's the easiest. Now we're going to get a little harder. All right. Can, can you just pause for a second so you don't jump ahead and confuse other people? I love that you're working ahead, but easy killer. All right, step one, name it. What is it? It's not a quarter. It's, it's, it's going to be a cubic. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. Look at my x's. Are either one of them negative? No. So how was that going to be a negative? Just because I felt like it? I was in a bad mood that day? Because that's not how it works. All right? Now, when you get here, what you need to realize is that just because it says square, you don't distribute that exponent. That means that you have two of them. Yeah, no, I thought you distributed the x in front, which makes it... We're not there yet. You're still oh. ahead of me. Um... If you let me finish the problem, I promise I'll end up answering your question. Um, so we have x times x minus 4 times x minus 4. From that, I'm in full factored form. So can I identify my x-intercepts? Yes, I can. I can come over here because I want this whole thing to equal 0. So if I was to take it apart, obviously x would equal 0. And what would x minus 4, what would x have to be in order for this to be true? 4. So therefore, my x-intercepts are at 0, 0, and 4, 0. Why wouldn't one of those in the parentheses be plus 4? Excuse me? Like, in the parentheses, there's x minus 4 and x minus 4. Why wouldn't one of them be plus 4? Because if it was plus 4, that means that this would be x squared 
minus 16, and that's not the case. It's not a perfect square. We're not right now. No, we no, don't. I know, I know. But before you like did the exponent square and exponent square before you made sure. That no, it you want it in factored form. You want it in its simplest form in order to identify your intercepts. You're you're doing nothing right now but identifying how to make this equal to zero. Because if this x was zero, then anything times zero would be zero. If these either one of these x's was a four, a positive four, then this whole problem would be equal to zero. And that's why your x-intercepts are zero, zero, and four, zero, okay? Notice, even though I have two of them on the number line, how many fours exist? One. There's only one four on a number line, so still, you only have one x-intercept at four. What happens here, it's called a bounce. Well, at least I call it a bounce, because my teacher called it a bounce. Um, also, I have teachers that call it kissing the line, but uh, it's a bounce at that point. It's a bounce because I'm going to it twice. Okay, I'm not going to go straight through the point. I'm going to go, I'm going to bounce on it. So what that means is that my minimum or our maximum exists here. So this is an example of going straight through the points. Okay, and that's because I had enough x-intercepts to fit the name of this function. It was a quadratic, I had two intercepts, so that works, right? This is a cubic, which means that at most I should have how many intercepts? Three. But do I have three? No, I just have two. So that means that one of them is a special one. One of them I'm going to go to twice. And in this case, what is the one I go to twice? Four. That's where my bounce is. Okay? So now, what you're going to do is find your y-intercept. So if I'm looking for my y-intercept, if I didn't know it right automatically, like I know what the y-intercept is automatically, but if you can't realize what it is automatically, then you would go through the process of foiling. So you would distribute first, and I have x squared minus 4x, and then you would foil second. And I have x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared, negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared, negative 4x times negative 4 is positive 16x. And what do you notice I do not have? A square on the second x. No, uh... No I do not have a y-intercept. I do have a y-intercept. What is it? What's the only number that I can add to this and it won't change its value? Zero. So my y-intercept is at zero. <coughs> Why did uh, the next uh, x wasn't squared in the next box? What do you mean? So you got x, x, and you got x minus four, and you got here. The next one, yeah. Here? Yes, ma'am. But well, you have it two x, you need x squared. It's x cubed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because four, x squared times x is x cubed. Where did you get zero from? Okay. That's what I, I just said it, but I can repeat it. Um, what happens here is when I get all the way down, is there a number there at the end that I visibly can see? What is the invisible number when I'm adding? Zero. zero. The invisible number when I'm adding is zero. That's because I can add zero to any number and will it change the value of that number? That's like me telling you, you have five dollars plus zero in your bank account. How much do you have in your bank account? You still have five dollars. But if I say you have five dollars plus one in your pocket, how much do you actually have? Six. So that one would change the value of what you have. Whereas zero will keep that value the same. Make sense, Haley? Yes. All right, perfect. We're lost on what zero comes from? No, I'm talking about how you like back with all this. How did I multiply all of this? Yeah, because I'm doing all that same. You're doing what? When you put it together, you get four squared minus four x minus four x minus another four. Well, negative eight. No, negative four times negative four is positive sixteen x. <laughs> if you can't see foil, use Punnett square. If foil doesn't work for you, then you need to use the Punnett square. With the Punnett square, so I have x squared. Guys, excess talking.
Okay? If you if foil doesn't work for your vision, x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. x squared times negative 4 is and then negative times the negative is a positive 16x. Okay? So again, do I have a number by itself? No. So my y-intercept has to be zero. Because there's no number by itself. So if I make all of these x's zero, what's left by itself? Zero. The only thing zero equals is zero. Like there's no other way mathematically to tell you that. Zero equals zero. If nothing's there and you're adding, it is a zero there. Where's that <coughs> confused look of why zero works? Do we not remember that property? Um, why wouldn't you distribute the x first and then separate them into two terms? Why are you wanting to distribute the x first? What are you, what are you asking me? Okay, but I'm not understanding where are you trying to... Why? Well, the very first on two, on just the... Define your intercepts? No, no, not on that. Just solving it. Like, I don't know, why wouldn't you distribute it to, like, x squared minus 4x and then separate them and, like, have I, 2 x squared minus 4x and x squared minus 4x? This right here? Yeah. You can't distribute this. No, not the squared. The x you can't touch this because it's locked in by exponents. Okay. Well, see, I didn't know this parentheses. I thought that I was... Parentheses? This is in parentheses. That's can being contained by itself. I can't do anything to this. And I can't do anything to the inside of this until that's gone. Okay. Because then it goes parentheses and exponent. Oh, no. I still have something holding me back. Okay. So then I can expand it now. And then once I expand it, no one yeah, has anything. From then on. And then I have to... Yeah, no, you cannot that's distribute. Why it, that's why I thought it was supported. No, you can't distribute. We're about to get there. See, I, just, I know what mess me up. When you have you know, the eggs in front of, outside the box, you got to do it to every last one of them, right? No, you just do it to the one that it's right next to. I'm right here, so I'm going to go into this one. I'm going to go into this house first. I'm trying to escape from the rain, so I'm going to go to the closest one to me to escape okay, from the rain. So what would be the next one? Uh, so after I did here, now I'm here. Because I've already gone to this house, and now these two can be com combined. Okay, I see. Now that's why I messed up there. And you either can do foil or pun it. Oh, my God. Your algebra one teacher just cheated you. Maybe I need to be an algebra one teacher, because I will prevent this from happening in life. Um, you should be. All right, so my wire steps are zero, zero. So my points are at 0, 0, and 4. Now, 4 is a special point. Why do we say 4 was special? It's going to get past two twice. It's, gonna, it's a bounce there. Well, what does a positive cubic function normally look like? It, it's cur it has two bins. I have two bins. Two bins. And what's my end behavior? It's uh, they're different. From left to right, I'm, they're different, but from left to right, I start... If the lesson is positive, we go negative positive. So this is what a positive would look like, right? Yes. Okay. So this is what needs to happen over here. So I'm going to start off negative. I'm traveling along. And then I have to bounce there. I can't cross here because I need to bounce here. So what I bounce is saying is that your maximum or your minimum lies on that y-axis. Your maximum or your minimum lies on the x-axis. So in this case, my minimum lies on the x-axis. And this is where that bounce comes into play. So I had a teacher that called it kissing the line. And she said, so your function is going to kiss the line there and then run away. <laughs> and the reason why she said that, she was like, back in you know my day, girls were bashful, unlike the girls now. But girls were bashful, and if we liked a guy, we would give him a quick peck on the cheek and run away. And I'm like, she's like, unlike y'all now, y'all stay around waiting for more. I was like, oh my god, she's so weird. She's so weird. Huh? Huh? Did she say how old was she? Huh? <sighs> that lady. She was probably in her. She she reti retired the year after me. So. What year was this? 
for me, what year was this? Um, I was 15, so 11 years ago. When I was 15? Oh, my God. This is an interesting It is. All right. So now, we're here. Name the function. It's, it's a cubic. What kind of cubic? Uh, 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 linear. Why are you saying linear? Oh, linear is a different thing. No, you said it was a cubic. I said yes. Oh, All right, so it's a cubic and it's a negative, and this can expand out to being negative times x minus 2, times x minus 2, times x minus 2. See, I would have messed that up a while ago if you wouldn't have told me it's not to Okay, that power on the outside tells me how many of that binomial I have. I have three of them. Okay, it doesn't tell me put the three to every, every term inside. It tells me how many I have. All right, so looking at this, what is my... X intercept. Oh, two. I only have one option, right? Two. two. X minus two equals zero. In order for this to be true, X has to be what? Two. 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 Because positive two minus two is zero. So I only have one X intercept. But I have a cubic function. So it's kind of bounce. So it's a little different. It's a bound, and it's gonna have to go through because it's gonna have to fill multiple duties. <laughs> okay, so I have a three power. You see that? Okay, so I need to make sure I get these other two in. So I'm going to have to bounce, and that gives me the square, right? But then I'm going to have to actually complete it because I need to end the function in order to get that function. So what's going to happen here? Oh, we need to find our y intercept. But I already know that this is a, a critical point, right? I must get through that. But before I do that, I need to find my what intercept? Y. Why? Why? Fastest way, honestly, it's the foil. I meant to, to distribute, foil, and probably punt it. Yeah. All right, negative. Distribute my negative, and I get what? Negative x and positive plus 2. Okay. Now I can foil these two, right? So I can fold the first two, and I get negative x squared. A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive. Oh, so now I'm left with negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 times x minus 2. Why are you lost? Oh, never mind. You just did oh, the first two. Okay. Never mind. I'm not lost. Oh, okay. Okay. All I did was do the first two. I haven't touched the last one. In my opinion, because you guys get confused with numbers as it gets longer, you should just do the Punnett square. Since I was going to do, but then I was lost. Negative x squared. 4x. <laughs> negative 4. x. Negative 2. Fill it in. X times negative x squared is negative x cubed. Were we right? Is it a negative cubic? The beauty about this is also you verify what you said it was. All right, then x times 4x is 4 times negative 4x is. What's the only box that really matters? The last one. The last one. The last, which is positive eight. And what do I get? So what's my y-intercept? What do you say? Oh, after we say the answer together? Yeah, that's just done. So all we've done is add and multiply. We haven't even added, we just multiply. 
And we multiply basic numbers, 2 and 4, and a 1 occasionally. Hmm. Questions? So my next critical point is up here at 8. So I need to make sure I go through there. I am a negative cubic. What shape would I normally look like? You would go positive then negative. So, yeah. Reverse. I would look like that, right? Yeah. Normally? Yeah. All right. So I know I need to start up here with the 8, right? So I'm going to have to go through this 8. That's not a very... You, you, you said you had to go through the 2. What happens is as I get to the close to the 2, I'm going to act like I'm going to bounce. But I don't. Oh. I swear, I'm swerving through the two. You're swerving on it. I'm swerving through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to finish it. Because I have to act as a bounce, so but I still have to go through it. you only have one? That's what happens when I have that three. No, I know, but whenever you only have one uh, x and x. It depends on what the value is. If this was a linear, that would be fine. But because I'm a cubic. No, no, no. Yeah, I understand that. I'm saying, but like whenever you're a cubic and you only have one. Or yes. Two, if I'm a cubic, you need to say that oh, part. Because you can't say if only. <laughs> All right. On four, what am I? I'm a what? Quartic. What kind of quartic? Negative. A negative quartic. So my end behaviors are going to both be down because they're negative quartic and it's an even polynomial, right? Even polynomial. So whatever it is, they both are doing the same thing. So I'm going to look something like an M. So that's my goal. All right. So second, intercepts. What are they? The third. Oh, um, four? Is it four? Okay, one of them is four. <coughs> What's the other one? Z. No, zero. Is it? My answers are zero and four, right? Can anyone tell me why? Because. Why? It's an x minus where it says x minus four. It's an x minus four. And then when you finish the work, it turns into a zero. I shouldn't let you take the lead. Then I can have x if you turn it to zero. Remember, I want this to equal zero. And because it's already factored, how can that equal zero? And how can that equal zero? In order for this to be true, x would have to be a? In order for this to be true, x would have to be a? Four. That is why my intercepts are four and zero. Got it? Can anyone tell me what my y-intercept is? Without doing the math. Negative four? No. Negative eight. It's zero. It has to be zero. Let's go back up here. When I had a y intercept of uh, x intercept of zero, what did my y? Zero. And the reason for this is because with functions, you cannot have repeating x's. X's. So if I had any other y intercept besides zero, this would not be a function, Haley and Pete. So therefore, my y intercept has to be zero. zero. No, really. I thought you were gonna say the original concept. All right, so I have all my critical points. So four, zero, and one, two, three, four. What happens at zero and four? They are both gonna have a what? Bounce. A bounce. bounce. A bounce means that either a maximum or a minimum is going to lie on the line. So in this case, I'm starting down here. Bounce. Bounce. So both of my maximums lie on the line. So are you kind of just leaving it? Yeah, it's a sketch. Okay. So they don't have to be perfect. Nope, I don't have to know exact I don't have to know how low oh, your minimum is. It's a summary of what we just talked about in words. 
No. <laughs> it's a summary. <laughs> so let's recap what we've learned. Moving up, moving up, moving up. So prior to doing all of this, you should have already known that the graphs of polynomials are smooth and continuous. There's no holes, no gaps, no breaks, no asymptotes, no sharp curves. They go smoothly. You can take your pencil and follow along the curves, right? All right, so you should have already known that. Thing number two is because of this, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The function goes on forever. Ever. That's why we put the arrows at the end of the function, okay? Because even though we're saying this is the end behavior, those behaviors are going on forever and ever and ever, okay? Um, next, the end behavior of the polynomial. So the polynomial will be the same as the power function of the same degree. What that is saying is that basically if I am a positive x cubed, I know that I'm going to end this way, right? I'm going to end positively. If I'm a negative x cubed, then I'm going to end negatively. So what we need to recall from last week is that if it's odds, they have what? Opposites. Opposite ends. If it's even, they have the same ends. Odds would be a linear, a cubic, a quintic, a septic, a nonic. Those would be your odds. Your evens would be a quadratic, a quartic, a sextic, an octic, or a decic. Do we need to write those down? We didn't write them all down, did we? No. no. Thank you for reminding me. Um, we should have done that on Thursday. I just think of babies. I mean, that's, that's how it's numbered, is how you say, if I have six tuplets, that means I have how many babies in me? Six. Six. Yeah. six. Um, Octomom had how many babies? Eight. <laughs> Septic. Septuplets. What if you had a big kid one time? Huh? But she did. What if you had a big kid one time? What? I would just, you know, apply for assistant living. Because I'm going to need somebody's help. All right. So that's, and I will put that up. Thank you for reminding me, Destiny. Uh, a polynomial of degree has the n has at most n roots. So if I'm a quintic, I have at, at most how many roots? Five. 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 Okay. Of those five, only two may be visible, and because those two are visible, that means that they have special traits. One would be a bounce, and one would be a a go. It would be a triple bounce because they need to add up to five. Does that make sense? Because two plus three is five. All right. So let's get into that. A single root, when you have a single root, it'll look like just an x by itself, or it could be like <coughs> x plus one, and there's no number on the outside. That's a single root, okay? With a single root, it goes straight through the function. I keep writing ghouls. I don't know what that word is. Okay, if it's a single root, it goes through the x-intercept. Okay, a double, a double root could look like x squared, or if I had x plus 1 squared, right? Because it's a double root, it's going to be a bounce. There's a bounce on the end. Are y'all okay with me using the term bounce? Yes. Does that make sense, what's happening? Sure, it makes sense. There's a bounce on the x-intercept. So it's going to look like, if that's my x-intercept, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a little bouncy there. I'm going to kiss the line. I'll give it a peck on the cheek and run away. Huh? Roots is referring to this. The number, yeah, the number that leads you to the intercept. A triple root. A triple root will look like if I had x to the third on the outside by itself, or if I had x plus, x plus y, one, three, third. third. That means it's covering double duty. I need to bounce and I need to go through. So I'm going to swerve on it in the words of Adam. Um, so I'm going to get
So I'm going to get as close as possible. It won't stay continuous. And I'm going to end my way out of it. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to slightly bounce. The difference is my bounce is before and after I go through it. Does those descriptions okay? Are those okay descriptions? Okay, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to try number five. I know the bell's going to ring, so by tomorrow I want you to have tried number five. Can you put it back up? Huh? Mm -hmm. Number five is. I want you, before tomorrow, I want you to have tried number five. It's doable, Quay. You just gotta. Is that an X? What, baby? Slightly bounce. 